Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Volkswagen, and I'm checking out a 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan in the R-Line trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 235.50 Pirelli tires wrapped around 19 inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Pyrite Silver Metallic. And it is, the sun is shining and hopefully you can get an idea of what it's all about. It's a nice metallic silver I and mean, it's just nothing super duper special, but it's just a good color in general, especially when you contrast it with this gloss black here in the front. So the front of the vehicle has been significantly changed here in the front for this year, this uh, redesign. And check out this like crease right here in the hood. It's got like this crease right in there and certain angles, you can see it better than others, but it really repositions the angle of the hood to match this area right in here. So there's all the black up here pretty much is gloss black except for this tag holder right here. Uh, now there is a uh, parking sensor is hidden right in here in this black. You may not be able to tell right away, but they're kind of hidden in there, nicely integrated. Now the Volkswagen badging, this is the new design that they came up with. It doesn't look hugely different, but it has a new design. Uh, that also serves as the radar adaptive cruise control sensor as well. And then there's an R over here for the R line, which is looking pretty nice. The headlights are a multi-reflector LED system. So the outer two LEDs are for the low beams. The inner portion is for the high beams. The turn signals, however, are standard bulbs. Looking at the profile, uh, that gloss black uh, here in the front does not continue around the wheel wells, but it does continue here on the side. There's a little trim right there, this gloss black. And right in here is gloss black. The other por upper portion of the side mirror and the pillar here is a gloss black as well. And that kind of helps uh, solidify the glass, especially when all the win windows are tinted here on the side. Now I have this, the vehicle positioned uh, to where the sun casts a shadow right in here. So you can see this little accent. Uh, certain lighting conditions, you may not be able to see that accent right there. And it kind of has a, a, similar to the front, it's a very strong uh, crease in the, uh, in the the sheet metal basically and and gives it a distinct kind of emphasize the the length of the vehicle because it is a little bit long uh, considering it does have a third row seat and of course you have the gloss black wheels that kind of blend all that stuff in this is what the key looks like and it's a full proximity key and this is the new volkswagen keys they've used a different design for years so now they're coming out with this new design which is nice and sleek thinner and feels a little bit lighter and um, just easier to carry around, I think. Now it has the, uh, there's a full proximity key. So you use, use the vehicle 100% without taking it out of your pocket or a bag, uh, as long as you have it with you. But it does have lock and unlock, the ability to open up the power lift gate and remote start here as well. Now there is a physical key on the inside that you can take out when you need that. But as long as you have this key with you, as long as this within a close proximity of the outside of the door, it has to be on the outside, you can lock and unlock the door by pushing this button. So right now, it's unlocked. Push the button, it senses the key on the outside of the door, locks the door. To unlock it, you push the button again to unlock it, so it just alternates. There's also a physical key location under this cover, so you will have to, um, there's a little slot under here, you just pop that off, and under there is a physical key to physically unlock the door when needed. The doors go all the way to the bottom of the vehicle and there's a seal down here as well. So there's a seal here and there's a seal here and that helps with uh, keeping the threshold area a little bit cleaner so when you're getting in and out of the vehicle it doesn't, you know, dirty your clothes or whatever. So here's the inside of the passenger side door, mostly black. Uh, it does have like an accent here. I guess they're kind of going for like a, kind of like a carbon fiber type look or something. And then you have that metallic here, here, and it's like a satin metallic uh, trim there in the handle. And then this white stitching really pops out, looking really nice. Now this is a soft touch here at the top, here, 
is a hard touch, but right in here is a like a vinyl type material. Uh, the soft touch, not super duper soft, but it is soft touch. Same thing with the armrest. It's not super duper <laughs> soft. It's not like a pillow or anything. It's just kind of like uh, like a rag laying over an anvil, that kind of soft. And then the rest of the door is a hard touch. Now the inside of the uh, pocket is felt lined, which is pretty cool. Keep things from rattling around when you put stuff in there. There's a little bit of a seal plate there on the th threshold. Kind of looking nice. Manually adjust the seat here on the passenger side. It does have a height adjustment though. So a lot of passenger seats that are manual don't have the height adjustments. This one you can tilt the back, you can do the height, and you can move it back and forth. And it has a what the, what the window sticker is calling a leatherette, which is a synthetic uh, simulated leather seat. Um, and here on the side, you can see they did a good thing. Uh, they put this really supple um, microfiber type cloth here on the side where it contacts the hard plastic. So that way that uh, the simulated leather doesn't dig in to the plastic and eventually cause it to wear. This can slide and, um, and wear uh, a lot slower, basically. But really nice looking seats. It has the white stitching here on the outside and then some regular stitching there on the inside. And they are fairly comfortable. And the simulated leather that vehicles have nowadays are very, very durable and easy to clean. Um, like in my particular case, I would prefer <laughs> the this, a lot, a lot, some vehicles. I would prefer the uh, simulated instead of the real leather. So there's the floorboard here. You can see it. It tilts up quite a bit right in here, kind of the angle of your foot. There's a net pocket there on the left side. This is all hard touch down here. Glove compartment is pretty good size. You have more of that mystery accent here, kind of like carbon fiber. And then there's kind of like a rubbery, uh, soft, non-reflective dash. Massive sunroof, I'll show you that later on. So you'll notice here in the front, there's lots of room to get in and out right in here. Lots of headroom, the swing of the door is nice and all that, it's really good. The back is basically the same thing. The swing of the door could be a little bit wider, uh, but you can see just tons of headroom there and just lots of space to get in and out of the vehicle, which is fantastic. The inside of the back door, very similar styling. It has the white stitching. Uh, this is a hard touch instead of the soft touch, but you still have that vinyl type material here and a felt line pocket as well. It has a little step, hard plastic step here. And this helps out with getting into the third, third row. And of course in here as well, for especially for kids and stuff. So the back seat is basically a bench seat, but it folds down in a 60-40, or yeah, 60-40 split. And, but you can see that you can recline. So this seat's a little bit reclined, uh, and that one's in the more forward position. So you can see the articulation. It's not a huge amount, uh, but it does have the ability to recline slightly. There is an armrest with cup holders there in the center. And you can see it's just basically a bench seat, pretty flat. Uh, it does have the latch system for car seats, which is easy to get to. There's a pocket on the back of both front seats. Here's the leg room is pretty good back here, except for in the middle. The, there's a huge hump there in the middle. And then there's a USB-C charge port and a 12, uh, 12 volt power supply, like a cigarette lighter type plug. And a little tiny, tiny pocket right in there. So these seats fold down in two ways. One is they fold down into a cargo mode, which is pulling the strap, 
and they actually snap in place once they go down so they're secure in that position um, so when you can fold down the third row and this and you can add to your cargo space depending on your needs uh, especially considering it's a 60 40 split so you can have some passenger and some uh, cargo added the other way is actually moving the seat forward and there's a latch right here so we'll just grab that and it's accessible from the front or the back right there and then we can push the seat like so so now we have a little step there and we can climb in and access the little tiny third row back here and it's not really made for adults especially big adults um, it is a 50-50 split third row. Now the one thing that could potentially be a, uh, a problem for you depending on your needs is that this third row seat does not have the latch system for car seats. So you just want to keep that in mind. If that's what you're planning on using it, you'll have to uh, you know use some other way of attaching the car seat or just not put the car seat back here at all. It's also worth pointing out that you can move these seats forward and back so let's say you did have a car seat in this seat here. Um, you can slide it forward so that way you can fit somebody behind them, uh, the car seat, and still access the third row from the other side, that kind of thing. So you can move the seats both this side and that side, forward and back, you slide them forward and back. And depending on your needs, you can kind of get out of the way, um, depending on who's getting in the vehicle and where. The fuel door is here on the passenger side and the fuel door locks with the vehicle. So right now it's locked. Once I unlock the vehicle, it also unlocks the door. And it has a traditional cap, little tether right here, uh, but it has this little post. And that post goes right there, so that way it has a place for your cap to go so it doesn't dangle and scratch your paint or whatever. Uh, but also, you don't forget your cap because you can't close the uh, the door because the cap is right there in that, that hinge area. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, here at the top it has uh, two roof rails and they're a matte black. And then there is a shark fin antenna that's a gloss black. There's a third brake light here in the top of the glass in that rear spoiler. There's a a uh, rear wiper as well. Now the tail lights are a combination of LED and standard bulbs. The backup camera is a little bit offset, which is interesting. It's uh, so there's the center of the vehicle right there with the badge, and they just kind of like move it a little bit over there to the right, just a little bit underneath that U. <laughs> um, so I thought they thought that was interesting. Um, so it does have the parking sensors across the back as well. So you have some here in the black and then some there in the silver area, in the body colored area. Now this back here is a reflector. There's no lights in there. All the lights are in this housing here. And they blacked out what people are referring to as these fake exhaust tips. Now if they're outlined in chrome to make them look more like exhaust tips, I could understand that. Uh, but this doesn't look too bad. To open up the power lift gate, we, we can of course use the key or we can push this button under here, which is to the left. So it's over here like underneath this G right here. Just push that and it'll go up for you. There's a place under here for reflective triangles to go. And if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this will be your cargo space. So you can say it's a little bit limited, uh, but it does give you some little bit of versatility because you can lift this up and there's some more room under there. Now, right here is a hook, which you can move out of the way when you don't use it. Um, and there's a little place for the seat belt to hook in place there. And then you can actually put a shade in here as well, and I'll show you where that is. But you have to fold down the third row seat in order to utilize that shade. So you see these buttons are these switches right here, or handles, uh, here on both sides. Those actually fold down the second row. Uh, this, the third row, you manually do it here, 
but we'll get to that in just a minute. Now this right here is the, the floor and it lifts up and you can kind of prop it up like so. And this is where the shade is stored. So you can store that shade under here. And you can take it out and of course use it when you want to. There's a little storage pocket there on the right side and the left side goes in there quite a ways and there's little spaces here and there little nooks and crannies but it also has a spare tire and tools in here as well now folding these seats down here on the third row uh, we can pull this like so and just kind of squeeze that and push down on the seat just kind of push it down it's going to get caught up on those seats a little bit you just kind of push it a little bit further same thing with this now you've noticed we've added to the cargo space already. We can still utilize uh, the other seat for passenger space and still have this down. And th this whole combination of folding the seats down and some having up, some down, depending on your needs, is really handy. So let's go ahead and push that down. Check it out, massive cargo space now. Now if we need to fold down the second row, there's these handles, we just kind of pull that and it folds down for us. It doesn't go all the way down and snap in place though, but it does kind of get out of the way. So if we're pushing a big box in or something and we just don't have quite enough room, we can go ahead and pull that and drop it out of the way. Same thing with this. Kind of flops down like so. So you can have a combination of passengers, cargo space, depending on your needs. Let's say you had a really long box, not very wide. You can just fold down some seats and put it in there and still have your passenger space. So it's very versatile, uh, but folding all the seats down, you have a really wide open space. Lowering the power lift gate, there's a little button right here. Just push that, it comes right on down for you. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle to start it up, you just press and hold the brake pedal and push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the uh, there's no mat in here, but it does have a place for the mats to snap in place right here underneath this plastic. Um, so that way it keeps it from sliding around on you. And check out these pedals. It's got the raised rubber aluminum pedals looking nice and sporty looking. Even a nice big footrest there on the left side. Now I'm going to raise the hood in a second, but I'm going to show you this hood latch. It is designed, it's right here. It's designed when the door is shut to cover this up so it doesn't accidentally, um, you know, you can't accidentally release the hood while you're driving. Now you can see the uh, really sharp LED daytime running lights here on the front. Look pretty cool. So raising the hood, there's a little lever right under here. Just reach in right in the very center, push up, and you're able to, able to lift the hood up. And it's not very heavy, but it also just kind of goes up by itself. It has that um, got piston right there that basically holds the hood up the hood up for you. So that's nice. And you see, this is what we're doing here. Just kind of pushing it up like so. Now you notice the underside of the hood has some insulation and some seals a little bit there on the on the sides kind of helps out with airflow and a little bit of noise there's also a seal across the back of the engine compartment uh, back here as well the battery's here it's insulated and it's easy to get to so you'll notice the the, the firewall is actually insulated but it also has a lot of this um, metal back here for as a heat shield and the reason why is because there is a turbocharger right back in here you can see it right there behind the engine uh, on the exhaust and those so basically this is a uh, 2.0 liter turbocharged turbocharged stratified injection uh, so it's turbocharged and it's direct injection engine uh, so the stratification is like the layers of compounding technologies to help you with fuel economy is the main goal. So it seems. Now, this is a front wheel, dri front wheel drive vehicle. And so you see the orientation of the, the engine. The front of the engine is here. The back of the engine is here. Um, and you'll notice that the intake air 
goes through the air filter here and goes around to the exhaust. And the reason why is because it has to be, um, it has to be, go through the, the uh, go through the turbocharger. I try to use the, I use the term, it, it, it vacuums in the air basically. Um, so that way it can go be moved around to the actual intake, which is on this side. So some people get confused and they, they think that the, the intake is on this side because that's where the air is going. But anyways, um, it's also paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. The transmission is located down here, like in this, uh, this area, way down there. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. Now I just want to point out, this has the blind spot monitor system and the light, the indicator for that is right here on the inside of the side mirror. Some vehicles have them actually in the mirror. This one has it right in there. So there's door lock controls. Side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side, left or right, and adjust it with a little, like a little joystick basically. And there's the power windows and they're one touch up and down. So it's one touch up one touch down and the same thing in the back here and it goes all the way down i don't want to roll it all the way down because of the window sticker still in place uh, but it does go all the way down there's a, the ability to release the, the uh, power lift gate there it looks like a car with a trunk but it's supposed to be the power lift gate so the driver's side has a power seat one upping the passenger of course um, but it's the type of seat that you can go up and down forward and back and all that stuff just like a like a dentist chair and then it also has two-way uh, lumbar adjustment as well to the left of the steering column is the headlight switch it's so right in here is off automatic headlights parking lights and then full-on headlights manually turn them on the steering wheel is also a tilt and a telescoping steering wheel, steering column, and you can lock it in place right here. I'm sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out, and I'm six feet tall. I have the driver's seat all the way down and all the way back to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. Um, it's a little bit, just a little bit too far back for me. I really need to pull it up a little bit more so I can push the brake pedal a little bit better. Um, so if you're a little bit over six feet tall, shouldn't have any problems. It's, uh, it's pretty roomy. It's very roomy actually here in the front. So the steering wheel, really nice looking. Has these like dimples here on the sides. A little bit of a contour. Sharp edge. Not sharp, but not rounded right here. It's kind of neat. And it's rounded across the back. And it's flat bottom as well. So yeah, the steering wheel looks pretty neat. It's like a little bump right here, a little grip, grip. Pretty impressive. Another thing about this vehicle is it has these buttons on the steering wheel and they are, some of them you can press, some of them you slide. Uh, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, but uh, it is pretty neat and they look good and they're very clearly marked and easy to you know, see, especially at nighttime, they're all backlit. Um, so as far as using them though, just a little bit of like sliding your finger across will change the volume, that kind of thing. So you have to get used to it. Now here on the left side is the cruise control. You turn it on, you can set, resume. Uh, it also has the lane keep assist, which you can turn that on there. And it's also adaptive cruise control. And you can change the speed manually, but there's a button here that you can uh, set the following distance between you and the vehicle in front of you And of course there's the volume underneath So the volume you can see that's kind of disconnected from what's above it same thing here on the right side uh, There's change through the radio station track or tracks depending on what you're playing here on the bottom And then disconnected from that is these other buttons now. There's the voice recognition here uh, But the rest of the buttons correspond with the screen for the gauges and I'll get to that in just a minute Windshield wiper controls for the front and rear are here on the right side. Turn signals on the left side, but there's also, and also your headlight dimmer switch as well. There's also a button here on the end, we'll get to that in a minute as well, that uh, pulls up, quickly accesses your assist systems. So here is the screen. Now the screen kind of looks like it goes all the way to the end, but it actually stops right here. So you can see it's in the, more in the middle there. 
and then there's a, a gauge here on the left side, engine coolant temperature, and then the uh, fuel gauge is here on the right side. Uh, so you can see right there in the middle, there is, um, this is all a screen, and this is somewhat customizable as well. So it has a digital clock, it has a temperature, and it has the status of your, you know, like your cruise control, different things like that. Right now, it's showing a speedometer in the middle, and also a digital speedometer off to the side. So if we push this view button right here, you see the view button, and then we'll cycle through, and you just keep pressing it, and now we have a tachometer in the middle instead. Push the view button again, Uh, gives us a just a focus on the digital speedometer without the uh, the round dial look. And right now I have uh, the what the vehicle um, the gear it's in on the right side, and I have a compass on the left side, and that's customizable. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So you can see these buttons right here. So there's these pages buttons, left and right, then up and down, and then OK. Those are the buttons I'm going to use to customize it. Okay, so right now, if I press to the right, it pulls up more information there on the right side. If I push to the left, it pulls up more information here. So depending on what side you want to customize, is which direction you initiate your, uh, your first press. So I'm going to start here on the right side. And then you can see um, there's different options here. And you can select any of these that you want. Now if you go into settings, you can check or uncheck some of these. Let's say you don't want to have all of these options, you just want to have a few of them that you use regularly. Uh, you can uncheck the ones that you don't want here. So let's say we want no display, we can have that. Or we can have uh, driving data, that kind of stuff. Now on the left side, it's basically the same thing, you can just choose uh, something different. Same thing with the settings. You can just kind of choose whatever you want on this side uh, to display. Uh, let's say you want the oil temperature. Uh, you can have that. So that's how you customize the information on this particular screen. And of course you quickly can access these other screens if you want to have a different view. So all you have to do is just push the view button and you can just rest on the one you want. Now up here there is actually a little quick access storage pocket with a rubberized bottom uh, so you can just kind of set something in there up there and you know access it quickly that kind of thing. Four-way flashers are here and it's a physical button. It's not a, uh, a button it's not like a soft touch button like some of the other most of the other buttons in the vehicle. So here is the touch screen it does have a physical volume knob tuned through the stations there. Um, and also the soft touch buttons are kind of quick access around the outside. So right now uh, we are in the menu, the menu screen, and you, it's basically like a phone, you know, like you can slide it back and forth and then you can look at the different icons and make the selections that you want. So let's look, go ahead and look at the radio. And you'll notice there's a radio button here on the soft, on the side here as well, so you can quickly access it. You don't have to go into the menu button to get to it. Uh, so you can see it has the presets there in the, in the center, and as I, as I move my hand close to the screen, these, some of these things kind of pop up and expand a little bit so we can see them better. Alright, so we can kind of scroll through a whole bunch of presets we can have. We can also go to a station list. Um, change the source. So we have AM, FM, satellite radio, um, internet radio, my media and then Bluetooth audio. Uh, so, and also you have Apple CarPlay Android Auto capabilities as well. So that's a separate system that will pop up on the screen uh, when that's selected. All right, when we hit media here, uh, it just basically shows there's no playable files, but we can of course uh, change the source here. Uh, we can make different selections here, whether it be my media or Bluetooth audio. When we hit the phone, once we pair the phone, we'll have access to recent calls, phone book, 
um, be able to send and receive calls just using our voice, just saying the name of the person in our phone book, uh, that and stuff like that. And there's the voice button to initiate that. And of course, we can make selections here. I'm going that the, the whole voice recognition thing is a whole nother separate video and on its own. Um, you basically just kind of it'll it gives you prompts so you can you know kind of guides you through it so it helps out with the voice recognition uh, apps uh, so this will be you know where you can select Apple CarPlay Android Auto that kind of thing adjust the sound and you can position it you know towards more towards a particular seat and it gives you like a visual reference which is pretty neat has an equalizer you can adjust the position and also the volume here all right, when you hit the car button, it kind of shows you, you know, basically a drive computer, what's going on as far as how long it's been driving, what's the fuel economy, um, the range, that kind of thing. Going to vehicle status, and it's basically um, nothing really to show in this particular case. And, of course, the last button is the menu, is the one we started out with. Um, there is... Um, a separate view for the climate control which it will pop up when you access the climate control down here so you can see it gives you a visual reference on where the air is blowing what's happening with the climate control and um, you know set to manual and where the is showing the air is blowing in these particular places um, you can sync the driver and the passenger so there so if you adjust the driver side it'll automatically adjust the passenger and here's the controls down here the, the actual uh, soft touch controls. You can of course do some stuff here on the screen, uh, but down here is where you quickly access everything. So you can slide your finger right here for the temperature for the driver, and in this case since it's sync, driver and passenger, but you can adjust it, the passenger separately. And then you uh, have heated seats for the driver and the passenger there. Recirculate the air, that's for where you want the air to blow. Uh, front and rear defrosters as well. Fan speed, you slide your finger here. Just gonna... so you just slide your finger, it's real easy. You can also turn off the climate control. This is the menu button. So this is the button that we saw up here. When you push that, it'll pop this up. Now right in here is a little bump. And that is not a button. It's intended to kind of separate these soft touch buttons. So if you're just kind of reaching down and placing your finger here to find a where, let's say you're driving, you don't want to look down. Um, you can kind of like get your bearings by where this little bump is and then you menu off, that kind of thing. So there's not actually a button. All right, so in here is two USB C charge ports, a, a 12 volt power supply here on the right side, also a, uh, a wireless charger. So you can put your phone in here and, um, and charge it. So, and also it's rubbery, so you could, it's not going to slide around on you. You can, of course, use the, this space for just stuff like this, you know, put change in here or whatever. But you have to take all that stuff out if you want to charge your phone. Uh, so it's not going to mess anything up to just use it as a storage pocket. There's a start button, we saw that. Here's the physical shifter. So if you're not a fan of put push button uh, shifters, this is definitely a plus. Electronic parking brake, so you lift it up to an, engage it. It engages the rear wheels. To disengage it, you hold the brake and push it down. Here on the right side is the auto stop start feature. You can turn that off if you want to turn it off, which I would. Parking sensors, uh, you can turn those on or off here. So when you push that, kind of gives you some information there. It also pulls up the backup camera. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and, and look at that. So when I put up the backup camera, the parking sensors will be uh, activated. And also it has the, the camera with the active guidelines back here as well. And um, so if there's something that it detects it'll kind of beep at you like you heard um, and so you don't you kind of keep an eye out so you don't run over something or hit something all right so there's the shifter so we saw reverse it's got neutral 
and then drive, uh, it also has the ability to go into sport mode by pushing it down one more time. And then it alternates between sport mode and drive. So you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show right here at least, if not on the, you know, if you have it selected up there. Uh, see, it says an S and then drive. So it just alternates. So that's how you get back into the drive. Now, if you want to manually change through the gears, uh, you just push it to the right and then you can bump it forward and back to change through the gear ratios. It's A speed transmission. Um, manually like a ratchet shifter and it's a forward is uh, increasing gear ratio and pulling back is to lower the gear ratio so there's some cup holders here and they have little articulating arms which is nice wish all vehicles had that keep whatever cup or bottle you put in there from wobbling around so much a little storage area there this is not rubberized this is kind of like slippery though There's the armrest, pretty soft, not super big. Don't think I'll be sharing it with the passenger, um, but it does. It is pretty soft. It has some stitching here as well, and this lifts up, and it's just kind of like it doesn't snap in place. It's just kind of resting there. Uh, but the nice thing is, when you lift it up, it doesn't flop back down. It stays right where you put it, so it just kind of stays there. That's the maximum opening there. And the storage area is kind of small this way, but it goes down in there a ways and expands a little bit that way. So, it's a little bit of extra storage space. And there is a place for wires to go in and out of this compartment, just in case you want to plug something in or something and put it in there. The rearview mirror is a... Um, it's an auto dimming rearview mirror and it only auto dims the uh, the mirror itself not the side mirrors um, it's actually auto dimming now because I have a shade over the light sensor which is located right back here and you can see there's a digital compass in there as well and under here you can turn that auto dim feature on or off here to the left of that is the home link garage door opener controls so right up in here is um, so there's some lights here and here. You can turn them on independently. Uh, you can turn on uh, the rear, the lights in the um, in the rear. You can see that's what they look like right there. So if you just want to have that light on, the the rear lights only, um, you can have those on. Um, so you can kind of independently turn on these lights and then the rear lights you know also if you want the interior lights to turn on with the door uh, you have that turned on so if you don't want it then you can turn it off so it's nice like if you have a baby sleeping or something um, you can turn that feature off so I open up the door now see the lights turn on an annoying chime and then but if I want that you can see it's pushed in if I push it and it pops out that means it's off that feature is off this is the shade for the center. If we'll get to that in a minute, you also have some roadside assistance and um, emergency buttons up here as well. The visor is kind of like wrapped in a vinyl type material. Uh, has a little clip there, a mirror with a light that turns on. This extends out on a plastic rod. Basically the same thing on the other side, as far as the visor. Okay, so the sunroof, let's check it out. Huge panoramic sunroof. So this uh, has a shade that does not cover 100% of the light. It blocks most of the light, but not 100%. It just has like a, just I would, it's probably like 85% or something like that. So let's go ahead and move the shade back. It just keeps going. Huge sunroof. So look at that. Almost the entire roof 
is nothing but glass, which is nice. It's pretty cool. Now we can tilt this front. This front section can move. The back section is uh, fixed. Uh, let's go ahead and tilt the front section so you can see a little bit of air in. And we can also slide it back as well. Opens up quite wide. Push it again, it'll go back just a little bit more. Looking at the visibility there in the back, uh, now it depends on how many passengers you have and how many seats you have up. Um, depend will you know vary on your your limitation as far as being able to see. Uh, but you can see there's those pillars are kind of broken up with windows and um, just kind of looking over my shoulder and 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 driving and stuff it's not really an issue that I can tell now I'm used to really bad uh, really bad blind spots but you can see that little bit of a window there in the back kind of helps out and of course the headrests are gonna get in the way a little bit but it does have the blind spot monitor system parking sensors camera system uh, rear cross traffic alert all that all the uh, technology to help you out with you know safely driving the vehicle as well but anyways thank you for watching thank you to east coast volkswagen here in myrtle beach south carolina and i'll see you guys next time